Yo, this is Lane and gentlemen, my name is CNOVPD34 and you're here today with Core Dinosaur Discussion with Kyle Carcarodontosaurus. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, for the first episode we're going to talk about Allosaurus. Now as you all know, Allosaurus was a large Jurassic predator, uh, ranging from about 7 to 12 meters in length, and uh, it shared its environment with other creatures like Chimerosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Stegosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Saurophaganex, Torvosaurus, and all sorts of other Jurassic creatures. Um, but today we're going to sp speak and talk about um, what really made Allosaurus successful, and more specifically, why there are so many different species of Allosaurus and in the in the Allosaurus genus. So let's get right into it today. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we know, um, currently I think there are six confirmed species of Allosaurus. We have Allosaurus frag uh, fragilimus, or frag fragilillus, should I say, not limus. <laughs> Uh, we have Allosaurus europaea, or europaeus, uh, Allosaurus tendergurensis, Allosaurus gymadesian, or some other, I don't know, we'll just call it Allosaurus J for now. Uh, most recent one, Allosaurus lucasi, and Allosaurus atrox. Now, these were dispersed throughout the world, um, I think there was, there, was, uh, there was four species in North America, there was Allosaurus europaeus that was in um, Europe, and then there was an, the African version, which is Allosaurus uh, tendergruensis. Now, why was this? Now, why, why, and more specifically, why am I talking about this? Well, it's because of a, a recent issue that I, I thought was very bizarre, and um, I'll just go into it in detail. But um, as you can see in this next picture, you have Allosaurus fragilis in North America. And then you have Al Allosaurus europaeus in Europe, and then you have Allosaurus tendergurensis in Africa. Now, where do the other three stick? And this is the this is the weird part. Allosaurus atrox, Lucasi, and Juman Juman are are all living in the same place as Allosaurus fragilis. Now, why is this? Now, um, I'm just going to run down each species of the of these four Allosaurus and tell you. Well, I'm just going to run, run down all six, should I say, all six, and I'll tell you and I'll I'll explain to you why I think these species became so diverse. So let's get into it. Now here we've got a, a picture of four Allosaurus species on here. Uh, one of them is un unidentified, and I think that's probably Gymnandus seni. Uh, but um, here we go. We got. Oh, hang on, no, that's that's probably the Lucasi or Lucasi or whatever you want to call it. But um, Allosaurus, but the four American Allosaurus, I think they're around the same size, probably reaching lengths of about ten to. I mean, not ten to. Uh, it's, it's nearly ten to whatever. Yeah, <laughs> but um, they probably get to around the size of like seven point five to. Ooh. I'd, I'd reckon 11 meters maximum some some older individuals might have gotten to about 12 but then again that could just be the Saurophaganax which is another genus of um, Allosaurid a relative of Allosaurus probably a descendant of Allosaurus as well but um, as you can see uh, Allosaurus fragilis, Allosaurus Gymadseni and Allosaurus Atrox uh, not like Atrox uh, Lucasi they probably grew to around yeah, seven to eleven meters long, at least, and uh, they probably they were probably the top predators of their time. And uh, I think I think the reason why these these divert into different species is probably just because of like you get with um let's for an example uh, black rhinos and white rhinos they're they're living in the same area at the same time, but they're different for some reason. Now it could be that these four Allosaurus species, including Allosaurus atrox, are probably different because 
they evolved they they evolved in different areas uh, as such like you can have i think allosaurus freddy lillis had a range of from utah to ooh, nearly all of the western uh, north americas and uh you could say that the other allosaurus species in, around that time in that place could have also adapted to different areas of the americas or it could just be simple misidentification it could turn out that all four of these species are actually just one species of allosaurus but then again i've looked at the skulls and i've looked at the head structures and all that on these allosaurus and they 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 are definitely in the allosaurus genus but they are def but they're definitely in a way different i mean if you look at the if you if you look at these head right here these are artist impressions of what the skulls and heads look like they look very different i mean allosaurus fragilis has a much more boxy kind of skull while german child i'll never i'll never learn how to say that properly jimad seni had a um, had a much more elongated skull as well as the uh, unidentified allosaurus species here that i reckon is look at the i can't say that either lucasi but uh, here we have Europenus, and I think that looks very similar to Jumanseni. There, I said it. <laughs> Jumanseni, but um, yeah, but th th it's very strange, but I reckon that's that's my theory on this. So, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, why? But, and there's another important question on this. Why did these guys get so successful? Now, I think it's because, definitely because at this point in the dinosaur period, the Mesozoic, Pangaea was beginning to break up, and you've got several different. You've got you've got genus, different genuses living in different areas. The same genus living in the same area. Well, it's not the same area. Different places, and this is why Allosaurus became so su successful because it evolved from a single genus, but then that genus adapted into different areas and different places of the world. And I think North America at that time would have been quite. It would have we would have had a lot of mountain ranges and all that separating different valleys and different places from each other and that's why you get different allosaurus species in there but another weird thing is that allosaurus j and allosaurus f they lived in the same place so why is that now my proposal is that it's because of well these two might have actually these two might have actually started evolving differently from each other and then the extinction of the jurassic period came maybe maybe we just getting maybe it turned out and it's just like with stegosaurus i mean you've got three different species of stegosaurus living in that same time in the same place and that's very bizarre isn't it you've got stegosaurus stenop stegosaurus armsa stegosaurus longispinus you've got all those weird actually no i think there's four the stegosaurus armsa stegosaurus stenop stegosaurus longispinus and stegosaurus youngartus and you've got all these weird uh, dinosaur species you've got this dinosaur genus with several species living in the same place it's very bizarre but I reckon that maybe it might be just a case of like matching certain species of a genus predator theropods with certain gene certain species of a genus herbivores and all that you could have you could say that Allosaurus J hunted Stegosaurus S or you could say that Al Allosaurus F hunted Stegosaurus L you could you could be saying that you could just that could be it. you could be matching different species from a single genus to another to different species of another single genus together in a predator prey relationship and why is that because the predators have adapted and evolved to hunt that specific species now that might not be the case because I'm not an expert on this but that's my proposal and I reckon that's probably not the case it could just be there could be other factors involved that I don't know about and I'm not going to go into too much depth about each factor because we'll be here for, forever but um, yeah that's my proposal I reckon these these species evolved because of where they were in in North America the specific regions because of factors that involved tectonic plates and all that creating mountain ranges and all that that made it hard for them to travel from place to place or it could be just because of genus and species matching up and predator prey relationships but thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed it um hope hope that's got you thinking as well comment down in the comment section below which kind of subject do you want me to touch on next time and what do you think of this subject that i just talked about thank you and bye bye